Hi viewers, welcome to Nursing with Eunice. Today we will be doing the assessment OSCE station. We want to make it as simple as possible where you can learn how you can do your documentation, how you can approach your patient, the, the things that can act, the traps that can actually make you fail this exam and how you can actually do it with ease. We don't want you to go to the exam hall with so much tension that, oh, assessment, have I done it the right way? Watching this video will help you to calm you down, ensure that you know the right thing the th whatever you're doing will be the right thing and you just go in there with all the confidence you need to ace the exam i've got an actor here uh, thank you so much cynthia for your help in um, coming to act as an actor for me so we're going to use a scenario where she's um, having um, pain she fell and uh, she's having pain she's gonna take me on the spot i'll ask her questions she'll just answer me the way she feels like and because that is what the exam is all about you don't know what is coming until you get there. So this is the 10 page paper you'll be given to read for 10, for five minutes. All right, you will be given five minutes to read this 10 page paper for the old OSCE. And you have to ensure you read it appropriately. I'll be doing, um, I'll be talking after the assessment section to tell you the tips, how to go through this 10 page paper in less than three minutes. So you can be well confident about the patient, know everything about the patient, and then you can ace this section of the exam. All the sections of OSCEs are very important, but the assessment seems to be a very tricky one because there are many bits and pieces there. So ace it. As you watch this, please calmly concentrate. If you need to take notes, please do, because we want the best for you. We want you to go into the OSCE exam and pass in your very first attempt. All right, guys, I'll see you in the video. Thank you. In this um, OSCE examination, you will be asked to wear your gloves and your apron. This is just because of the COVID, all right? So if the examiner tells you, um, you can ask your examiner, I want to do my alcohol hand gel. Can I use my glove hand? <laughs> She's gonna tell you yes. 90% of the time she will tell you yes. Just go ahead. This is, they just wanna see how well you practice your hand hygiene. Okay, they just want to see you do the step. Um, you see the link here. I'm, I'm going to put the link here. How to do the proper hand hand hygiene. It's a step. You could write out the steps and just master it. All right. So I have put on the glove and the apron. This time does not count. The examiner will allow you to wear it. All right. So the main assessment starts now. So our time starts now. All right. Let's go on, guys. So the assessor tells me. My time starts now, and my time for the old OSCE is 15 minutes. All right, so let's start. As I saw, I can confirm my environment is clean and safe. There is nothing to make me trip or fall. I provide privacy for my patient. I clean my hands according to WHO standard using an alcohol and gel. I can see it is dry and intact and in date. I put an ample amount of alcohol gel on my palm. I my palm palm to palm. Palm over the dorsum with fingers interlaced. Fingers interlaced, palm to palm with fingers interlaced, fingers interlocked, fingers interlocked, rotational rubbing of the thumb and vice versa, tips to the palm, tips to the palm, rotational rubbing of the wrist, rotational rubbing of the wrist. I allow my hand to dry for 30 seconds. My hands are clean. I'm happy to approach my patients. Hello, Miss Cynthia. My name is Eunice. I'll be your attending nurse for today. Hi. Yeah. So actually, I am here to check your full set of vital signs. All right. Are you happy with that? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. So what I mean, full set of vital signs is your blood pressure, your pulse, your respiration, your temperature. All of this will be checked just to see how you are progressing in your health and how we can monitor you. Okay. All right. Yeah. Before we go on, do you mind if I check your full names and date of birth, please? That's fine. All right. So I've got here your name on this. I will be constructing it with what you have on your wristband. Can I hold your wristband? Sure. Okay. Could you please tell me your full names, ma'am? Cynthia Alex. And your date of birth, please? 6th of March, 1991. Beautiful. I can confirm, as I saw, that I have the right patient. It corresponds with the date, with the, with the document I have on my hand and with what I have on the, on the wristband. And guys, this is a, this is a page containing the patient's details. So you make sure you open to the page containing the patient details. Some people will open the page that is just having no information about the patient details. You have to be sure that the patient details are on that page. If you use a vague page, that will not count well for you on your marks, all right? So, 
So ma'am, have you attended mass for today? My name is Eunice and I'm here to check your vital signs, which is your blood pressure, pulse, respiration, and um, your temperature. Okay, uh, are you happy with that? Yeah, that's fine. Okay, that's good. So can you please tell me your full names and date of birth? My name is Cynthia Alex, date okay. of birth, 3rd of March, um, 1991. That's beautiful. Do you mind if I cross check with the wristband? That's fine. Okay, thank you. Okay, Cynthia, Alex, and data, oh, I can see this information corresponds with what I have here. Mm -hmm. And do you have any allergy that we need to know of? No. Oh, that's beautiful then. So, are you comfortable at the moment? No, no, not. Okay, um, you have, what makes you uncomfortable? Are you in pain, any form of pain? Sure, I'm in pain. Oh, okay. So, if you are in pain, zero being no pain and ten being the worst pain, where would you rate your pain, madam? I would say six. Six? Oh, six. Okay. Um, that is, um, that is uh, a bit of a lot of pain. Um, do you mind if I make you a bit comfortable with that we help? Oh, thank you. Okay, let's just introduce this pillow and see how that helps. Okay. Um, put this behind you. Yeah, do you feel comfortable? Yeah, thank you. Does that help? Yes. Oh, okay, so we're gonna do the vital signs, and um, if the pain is still there, I will check if you have any analgesic, and I can also check with your GP if nothing has been prescribed to prescribe something for you. Okay, all right, so I'll just leave you with a call bell right now, okay. and then I will go get the equipment I'll be using for you. Okay, all right, so I'll do my alcohol hand gel again. Okay, and then I said, so can I confirm that uh, my equipment has been calibrated in the last 24 hours and ready for use? Yes. Okay, uh, you can see, I can confirm it is clean and intact, so I'm happy to use. Okay, I move it to the side of my patient. Um, hello, Cynthia. I would like to actually... Um, Take the vital signs now. Are you happy for me to continue? Yes, that's fine. Yeah. If you don't mind, please, you could please straighten your leg for me. Don't cross your legs. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Okay. So I'm going to assess so I can confirm I have the right size of cough for my patient. And this cough is covering 80% of the arm circumference and 40% of the arm length. And I'm going to check the brachial artery. I can see it is bounding. I'm happy to use. I'm going to place the cough two to three centimeters above the brachial artery and I'm going to take my blood pressure. I'm switching on my machine. I'm taking my blood pressure. Can you relax your hand, please? Okay. Thank you. Are you comfortable? Yes. All right, lovely. So I'm going to use the other hand while my blood pressure machine is on. I'm going to check for the capillary refill, checking my pulse. I'm going to press the finger down for five seconds. Five and four and three, and two, and one, and zero. I can see the capillary refill is less than two seconds. I am happy to use the nail bed. So I'm gonna put in my posimeter and I'll check the oxygenation. I'm now going to proceed to checking my temperature while this two, uh, this two is cooking. I would uh, ask, uh, assess so. I'm gonna ask my client now, um, Cynthia, do you have any hearing aid in your ears? No. Okay. I'm going to check your blood, your temperature now. Which of the ears would you prefer I use? The left ear. The left ear. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, the left ear will be this ear. In it. Yes. <laughs> okay. Sometimes it gets confusing. Okay. So you're going to, when I, when I press the temperature, you're going to hear a, um, a sound. It's just the, temp, the, temp, the thermometer taking the reading. So do not be alarmed. All right. Okay. Assess, so I'm assess, assessing the ear. I can see it is dry and intact. And there is no um, sign of infection. There is no swelling or redness. I put in my thermometer probe. I take the temperature. I can see my temperature is 35.4. My temperature is 35.4. I am just going to put pop it up on a paper here so I don't forget it. All right. And I'm going, I can see my blood pressure now has red. And my blood pressure is um, 130 over 80 millimeter mercury. And I can see my posimeter is reading 96% oxygen. All right. So I am not going to use the pulse rate on my posimeter. I am going to count the pulse rate by manual counting. So Cynthia, I am just going to check your pulse rate. All right. Mm -hmm. If you don't mind, you could just put your hand across your chest for me. Mm -hmm. All right. I'm going to check this for two minutes. Is that okay? That's fine. Thank you. 
So using my wristwatch, my breastwatch, which is right on the table provided by the exam center, I am checking my posimeter and my time starts now. Thank you very much. Um, I was able to check your pulse and I also um, I checked your, your, your pulse for one full minute. I'm sorry I didn't tell you. The other one minute, I used it to check your respiration. I'm sorry about that. This is because if I tell you before I take the reading, that may alter the respiratory rate. All right. Are you happy with that? <laughs> Thank you very much. So for the pulse rate, um, we got 84 beats per minute and for the respiration we got 20 beats per per minute all right so i just put it pop it here so um thank you so much for your cooperation so you did so well are you still comfortable are you okay yeah, i feel better oh that's good so i am going to just um record this um, vital signs and then i'll come to explain the result to you okay all right thank you very much so leave me yeah thank you so i'm just gonna take the the new score the news um calculating um, form and i'm going to pop in my scores there and then i will go back to my patients to explain the the results So guys, we are now ready to document it. So I'm confirming now, this is my patient, Cynthia Alex, and the date of birth is co corresponds with what she told me, 6th of March, 1991. The date of my admission, the examiner told me, assume it is today, and the time on my, on my exam script says 12 o'clock. So I don't want to assume the time that is i'm doing the vital signs but i'm assuming the time on my form so i'm just going to rewrite the date i took the vital signs which is i'm going to manage the space 27 11 21 and i'm going to write 12 00 so there isn't 24 hours format so the respiration we said i wrote i just pop it in here on the rough sheet they get on the sheet they gave me having my question you can write there so you don't forget because if you mistake if you miss the value it's going to affect you because the examiner already have the value and they are plotting theirs against yours. All right. So the respiration I got was 20. So I came in here and I just do this. Just a dot, a tick dot to show that you know what you're doing. And the SpO2, my patient is not on oxygen. So I'm using SP, SpO2 scale 1. All right. 90% of the time you'll be using scale 1. All right. So oxygen I said was 96. And I come here. You don't need to cram anything. 96 is just here and um, 
Note that the respiration is under zero. You can see there is no score here. When it is on white, it is under zero. Supposing the respiration was going to 24, you can see it will be under two, but this time around it's under zero. So take note of that. And the SPO2 is 96, it's under zero as well. Now, we are not gonna use this SPO2 scale two because patient is not on oxygen, all right? And you can see the red right in here. It says only use scale two under the direction of a qualified clinician, all right? So we don't have any business with this one. Please do not mistake, in, mistake yourself and write something here. It's not your business. Now let's move on to the next one. Hey, is my patient on oxygen? No, my patient is on oxygen. I would have take in here and I would have written the type of device. If it is nasal, nasal max that she's using or venturi max or whatever, but she's on hey, so I'm gonna take here and here falls under what? White, which is what? Zero. Then I move on to the blood pressure. The blood pressure here is 13080. So I move on here, 121 to 130, that's the colon. So I do this. I open the colon and the lower part is what? 80. I do this. And then I, I can use a straight line or I can use a broken line just the way you like it. Okay. So this is your reading. You've plotted your blood pressure. So note that we are only having business with the systolic. And the systolic here is under white, which is zero. So you don't have business with the diastolic. The diastolic is falling, falling under three, but that is not your business. All right. So you don't need to record your total new score as three. You only have business with the systolic. These are very important um, points that you need to take note of because documentation error has no forgiveness. It's not, uh, it's not pardonable, all right? And then we move on to pulse. What did we say the pulse was? You see, I wrote it here. It was 84, all right? So to plot it, you look at it, 81 to 90, it falls under there. We put it here. And fortunately, it's falling under what? Zero. And then we come here. Was the patient confused? No, she knew she was in the hospital. She was she was saying uh, whatever she was saying was was uh, coherent. So my patient is alert, not confused. Okay, and the verbal response, everything was there. She was conscious, so I put alert. For alert here, you put full stop. But for oxygen here, you should put a. Sorry about that, guys. So a should be there. Why for alert? You should put what? Full stop. Why for temperature here? You come here. The temperature was 35.4. You don't want to forget that. So you come here. Where does 35.4 falls in? 35.4. It comes in here. And if you look at it, it's on the yellow line. So it's what? One. So let's calculate our total new score because you have to fill all the column and you have only business with the first column. All right. If I venture you make any mistake, you can just draw a straight line on this first column and take the second column. All right. So don't panic. Relax. It's not easy, but you can do it. So you now come to the news total. The news total, when you check here, is under zero. Here is under zero. And here, you don't have business with SPO2 scale 2. Here is hair under zero. Blood pressure, you can see it's what? Under zero because we have business with the systolic. And the pulse is what? Under zero, which is it's under the white um, parameter, which is zero. Alert is under zero. And temperature is under, is it under zero? Can you please zoom in? Is this under zero? Is this under zero? No, guys, no. Temperature, unfortunately, is under scale one. It's under parameter one. So what are we going to do? We are going to say our total new score from the beginning to the end. The only number we could get is what? One. So we write one here. And then you come here. What is the monetary frequency? You don't need to cram these guys. The examiners actually want you to pass, so they made it easy for you. You're going to have this key. So you come here. The, it says that... If you have a total news call of one to four, you can monitor within four to six hourly, right? The patient have a pain score of how many? Of six. And she told you she was in pain. You've not given an adjustic. You've just repositioned the patient. So I am going by four. I'm going to be monitoring her four hourly because I really want to know the reason for the pain and if my intervention is working. So you can write four, you can write six because from one to four, you could, should monitor between four to six hourly. So we come here, I have chosen four and then I will write my monitory frequency. Can you see here it is written monitoring frequency. I'll write it here, four. Don't need to cram guys, you can use this key. And 
Am I going to escalate? Now, listen to this, guys. As a new nurse, you're writing OSCE exam. You are, you are entering the NMC register as a new nurse, as a newly qualified nurse. So you should escalate. At all times, you should escalate. So here, you are going to write yes. Because you are reporting to someone. You are under supervision because you are a newly qualified nurse. All right? And then here, your initials, you put it. My name is what? A. Eunice. You see that? I put my initials. And that's it. I'm done with this. So finishing this now, I will now go back. This is this step is very important. You cannot say, I have finished this. My exam is done. You will go back to your patient and you are going to explain what you have your score and what your plan is to your patient. Watch me as I do that. And also, your activities of daily living, they will tell you what you are going to talk about. So you can pick one or two and then you quickly talk about it. And then that is your exam. That's it. And when you finish your exam, don't forget your hand hygiene. Hand hygiene, they don't joke with it. All right? So let's go back and see our patient to explain this. So Cynthia, uh, welcome back. I just uh, do a quick hand hygiene. I'll do my hand hygiene again. Cynthia, I have um, done your documentation and um, the new score came that you're scoring one, which is not too bad. Okay, you will need to be monitored. We'll be monitoring you for four hourly. Every four hours, we'll be coming to repeat this set of vital signs again to see how you're getting on. All right? And... Um, I will be discussing just briefly with you, asking you some few questions. Are you happy with that? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. I just wanted to find out, how do you mobilize at home? You, I notice you live in a story building upstairs, yeah? Yeah. So how are you able to walk around the house? Where is your room? Yeah, I use a frame for now to move around. Okay. Just the thing. Okay. I see. So where exactly is your room in the house? Is it upstairs or downstairs? Yeah, it's upstairs. It's upstairs, okay. So you may be having difficulty with the stairs because of the lake, yeah? Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. So have you ever contemplated, what about moving your room downstairs just for easy mobility? Do you have a room downstairs you could use? Yes. Okay, so how about moving downstairs? Yeah, I'll try that. Okay, and um, for the leg, if you don't mind, uh, are you happy for us to get the physiotherapy involved so they can help? with the exercises sure. and all that you need. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'll refer you to the physiotherapy team. And then if you don't mind, the pain management team as well could be of help for the pain since you're having a severe pain. Okay. Number six, okay. So I'll refer you to the pain management team. They're going to help you. And do you want to tell me about how you eat? Yeah, um, I've been having lots of appetite because of the pain. Okay. So I feel a bit bloated when I eat. So I just eat very little. Oh, yeah. oh, sorry to hear that. So uh, I want to encourage you, you increase your fluid intake. You've been drinking at all? You've yeah. been drinking? Okay. So that's very good. So how about we talk up, We talk to the, the, the uh, um, dietitian who will look into your diet and see what, what could be more appropriate. How about that? Okay, that's fine. Oh, that's lovely. So I'll make, I'll make a request for the dietitian who will also contact you and help you with your diet all right okay okay so i'll just leave you now to relax i'll leave you again with a cold bell okay and mm -hmm. i'll go check your medication to see if you have anything for the pain you were having earlier mm -hmm. all right all right thank you so thank i said you. so thank you so much i said so i will do my hand hygiene again and then i said so I am done with my patient. I'll remove my PPE, snapping my PPE off, I'm putting the away from me. I'm putting the clinical waste. All right, and then I'll remove my gloves. Get my equipment ready for neck clean and ready for for next use. So. This is the end of the assessment. I hope I made it simple for you. I hope it's clear enough to understand. I'll see you again as I explain the 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 some tips, tips, tips that can really help us is this exam. Okay, I'll see you again. Thank see you. you. Bye. So guys, I just want to give you the tips of this um, assessment that you have watched. 
So checking that your scene is safe is very important. Checking that the, the patient is protected, that privacy is maintained is very important. Also, doing your iron hygiene is very important. So one tip is that the first iron hygiene you are doing, you are speaking all the grammar, telling the examiner, you are doing it according to WHO standard, you are doing it palm to palm, palm over the dorsum, um, with fingers interlaced, palm to palm again, with fingers interlaced, fingers interlocked, fingers interlocked, rotational rubbing of the wrist, rotational rubbing of the thumb, I mean, rotational rubbing of the thumb, tips to the palm and vice versa, rotational rubbing of the wrist, rotational of the wrist, I allow my hand to dry for 30 seconds. This is pretty simple, so just remember those steps. Palm to palm, palm over the dorsum and vice versa, rotational rubbing of the, of the thumb, Rotational rubbing of the vice versa, rotational rubbing of the uh, hands to the palm, uh, vice versa, of the risk of the risk. So when you know this, it's part of you. Once you practice it, it becomes part of you. That is very important. So the first one, you are saying it like that, saying that you are practicing it. And if you, if you are not comfortable saying it, just practice it the right way. Like this, and now see what you are doing. It's very important. I don't joke with the hand hygiene, you know. Infection from you can go to the patient, from the patient can come to you. So you just need to maintain that hand hygiene. As nurses, we know the importance of that. So we want to keep it at that. Then um, the privacy comes in. Um, you don't want to forget to do that before you wash your hands. And then you want to remember to introduce yourself. Okay. Hello, my name is, you want to introduce yourself. You want to tell why you are there. You don't just want to tell the patient, I want, I'm here to do a vital sign. Because the patient may not know what is vital sign. So you need to tell them, I'm here to do your blood pressure, your pulse, your respiration, your temperature. You need to tell them all of that so you can come down to their level. The next thing after you have told them why you are there, you need to confirm their name, their full name, their date of birth. And if they have an allergy, you need to acknowledge the allergy, checking it with their wristband. It's not enough for you to say you've heard their name, it is on the documents. You need to cross check with the wristband. Okay, guys. Then another thing again is that when you are cross checking the, the allergy, you need to acknowledge it that you will not give them that thing they are reacting to. And then the next thing again is after confirming you are having the right patients, you want to confirm for their pain, their comfort. You don't want to do, go ahead and do your vital signs anyway. That's why I'm here. Just do your vital signs. You don't care if the patient is comfortable. You don't care if the patient is in pain. That is not tolerated. So the com patient's comfort comes first. So that you have to ensure the patient is comfortable. And the patient is not comfortable. You make the patient comfortable first before you can go ahead. And if the patient is saying, ah, um, even the pillow you put behind me or whatever you are trying to do is not well helping, I'm still in pain. Some patient can be like that. You tell your examiner that in a normal clinical setting, I am going to check the patient as an analgesic. I will give as prescribed and if there is no prescription i will contact the gp who will prescribe an analgesic for the for the patient all right so you want to take note of of that then another thing again you want to do again is that um, when you're checking the blood pressure you want to ensure that you verbalize that you're using the right cough the right cough should be about 80 percent of the cover 80 percent of the arm circumference and 40 percent of the arm length and that arrow which i'll be putting the link here what the blood pressure looks like, which we all know. I just want you to see that arterial arrow. It should be in alignment with the brachial artery. And it should be two to three centimeters above the brachial artery. And before you put the blood pressure cuff, you need to put your hand and check. You saw me put my hand and check if the pulse, if the pulse there is pounding, if it is pulsating, you need to check before you put the blood pressure cuff. And then the other hand is what you are going to use. You can't use the same hand you use for blood pressure to check the pulse. No, that is a fail. Because you know when you check the ration, because when you know the rationale now, it will help you not to do it in your exam because of tension. When you put the blood pressure off, it tightens the hand and then it, it, it impedes the blood flow to the peripheral nerves. And then when it impedes the blood flow, you cannot have accurate SpO2 measurements. And that is why you're using the opposing hand for the posimeter check. When you use the opposing hand, what happens? The blood, the oxygenation is not impeded, so you can get your accurate reading. You get the point now. So that is why you are using that. Then when you are checking the temperature, don't just say this is temperature, just chuck it into the patient's ear. No, you have to check with the patient if the patient has earring heat. And if the patient does not have earring heat, you have to check the ear if there is any sign of infection, any discharge. And verbalize to the examiner, 90% of the time the ear will be fine, all right? Now verbalize to the examiner that the ear is dry, it is intact, there is no sign of infection, you are happy to use, you understand. So you put it in and then you also tell the examiner, the patient that the patient may hear a sound. The patient should not be alarmed. 
patient comfort they don't play with it in the uk patient comfort and safety they, they don't joke with it at all so you have to ensure that so if you put the thermometer you do pain you bring it out to take your reading the one tip i want to give you is that some people take all the reading and then when it's time to chat they are forgotten so there is no rule against your writing. You saw when I take the reading, I I I, I take the reading. Ah, your temperature is that something like very poor. This I'm just gonna write it down. You are allowed to write it down. You just write it down. Your blood pressure is this. You write it down. You're not writing it in the chat. You're not writing it here. You're not writing it here directly. You are just popping it into the paper where they wrote the questions for you. That paper, you can write on it. Nobody is marking that paper. So you can write on it. Just quickly write your the temperature, write your post. Just write it there. Don't be scared. You can use it. You can write on it. All right? So when, it's now, when you now finish with all the vital signs, you will now come ahead and you can now look at that paper and know that you are documenting accurately what you got. Because if your temperature is 36 and you went to record 37, what's it feel? Because the moment you pronounce your blood, your temperature, and you know there are cameras watching you in the exam hall. The moment you pronounce the temperature, the temperature is 30, 36, the examiner already records it. The cameras already records it. So if you now chart 37, that's a fail. So that is why, so you don't forget because of tension, you write it down. This is a very important point that you need to know and practice. Practice it at home before the exam day. You to be part of you. It's not difficult at all. What makes it difficult is just that, you know, I told you, it's a nerve-wracking exam. It's something that really, it frightens you, okay? It frightens you, and that is really, really very sad. To see people fail because of fear, you know? That's about that. Then when you are checking your pulse, you have to count your full set of pulse for one full minute. When you're counting, after counting that, immediately you count your respiration as well for one full minute. And that gives you how many minutes? It gives you two minutes. So that two minutes... You cannot downplay it. You cannot sh do short cut like, let me count for 15 seconds and multiply by four and get one minute and then get it done so as to meet up with time. No. The reason for this, because when you know, like I always tell my students, when you know the rationale, you do the right thing. The reason for this is that you could be checking a pulse and then the characteristics of the pulse just change. You could have a browning pulse and then along the line becomes trendy. The pulse, ha the consistency of the pulse, you will monitor it for one full minute. And then one full minute will give you the accurate reading of what the heart rate really, really is like. And then the respiration as well, you cannot reduce the timing. It has to be one full minute. While you are checking the pulse, it is important that you don't ask the, you don't tell the, the patient that, the actor that I am checking your pulse and your respiration. No, just tell the patient I'm checking your pulse and check the pulse and check the respiration. And then when you finish, you saw the way I did it, you tell the you tell the patient that, I'm sorry, I did not inform you before I take the respiration. This is so as not to alter the reading. And that's it, you'll be good. Then when you finish, you chat. After chatting your reading, you got your new score. You go back to educate your patient. This is the score I got. This is, you, you must inform your patient of the total new score you got. In this scenario we used, we got new score as one. So you must inform the patient that your new score is one. I am monitoring you for hourly. I am escalating your care. And I'm going to also have a brief discussion with you if you are happy with that. Then you ask some few questions. The examiner can, the questions, if you have read your, your five minutes in paper, it could tell you, talk about hydration, talk about nutrition, talk about mobility. It can just give you key points. So you just talk about it briefly. You can talk about it within one minute or within 30 seconds and you are good to go. Just ask the patient, just the way I ask the patient and that's the end of your exam. You clean your hands, you tell your examiner you're going to return your equipment and ensure they are clean and ready for next use. And that is all you need to do. Clean your hands, properly dispose your gloves and apron and your exam is over. Guys, it's so simple, guys. The secret of OSCE is preparation. And in preparing for OSCE, you, have, you need to have, know the right thing that is expected of you. You need to know the marking criteria. And one thing you must know in OSCE preparation is that practice, practice, practice cannot be overly emphasized. You have to keep practicing. Just continue to practice. Continue to practice. Just keep practicing and you come to see that the exam will just be like a walkthrough for you. And like I always encourage my students, do not fail. Do not feel, if you can, to get a paid service. A paid service is something that is always valuable because at the end of the exam, you come to see that it's well worth it. When you get a paid service, the person teaching you is under tension. You are under tension. 
Everybody just wants you to have a 100% pass. And then we give you all you need, all the documents you need, everything you need to be, will be given to you. When you go to the exam hall, you will know you are going with the right information. You're not just assuming. And OSCE is not an exam where you will say, uh, I, I know what I'm doing now. Is it? No. OSCE is an exam that you need to be thorough. The more experience you have as a nurse, the more difficult it is to pass OSCE. You come to see people that just graduated last year, two years ago, they are passing. People with 20 years of experience, 30 years of experience are failing. Why? You can't be overly confident in OSCE. You assume you don't know. You learn it again. You learn, you relearn, you unlearn. You learn all the learnables. You just tell yourself, this time around, Olodo must pass. Someone who is not so brilliant must learn and pass. And guys, I tell you, you can do it. The very fact that you are watching this video up to this point tells me you are going to ace your exam. And I want you to watch this video again and again until it becomes part of you. And when you are doing your own video, I want to give you this tip. Record it. Record yourself. Don't, don't see it as a waste of time. It is never a waste of time. Staying tuned. I'll see you again in my next video. You guys have done marvelously well. And please do not forget to continue to subscribe to this to the channel if you have not done so. And continue to share this with your friends. Knowledge if shared. You know, when you know something, I must say this: when you know something, you really know that you know it when you are able to teach it. So you send the video to someone, the person reads it, and then the person throws questions back at you. If you are able to explain and answer those questions, then you really know it. You get my point. So, guys, I wish you all success. I'm waiting for your success stories as I will be uploading the next video. Um, it should be about one of the OSCE stations because we really need to upload as many videos as we can because there are really a lot of skills that are pending to be uploaded. So, just stay tuned and we'll keep you updated as these videos are uploaded. Once you are subscribed, automatically you will see these videos as they come online. Thank you so much, guys. Take care and thank you for supporting Nursing with Eunice. Bye.